Right, I think now is a good time to begin. Again, on behalf of Upgrad Abroad, wishing all of you a very good evening. Welcome to our webinar on STEM education and careers in the United States. Uh, and please join me in welcoming Mr. Rag Singh, uh, who is the Manager Strategic Initiatives for Northern Arizona University, one of our esteemed patron universities. Uh, Rag, hi. Uh, wishing you a very warm welcome. Hi, Praneet, good to see you and uh, good to have all the learners from Upgrad joining us uh, this evening. Likewise. Uh, just for everybody to know, uh, my name is Praneet. I'm the head of undergraduate admissions for Upgrad Abroad. Uh, to introduce Upgrad to you is, is something I love doing. So Upgrad is increasingly uh, making its efforts to ensure that we bring some of the most high quality education uh, to India. We're bringing some of the best universities, the top one or two percent universities, uh, institutions of academic excellence to India, making the path to them more accessible, more affordable. Uh, also in sync with the government policies of India, we're trying to ensure that education now becomes more democratized. You've got a greater control, you've got a greater autonomy on choosing what part of education you want to cover in India, what part of education you want to cover in the, you know, in the US, in UK, in Canada, in Australia, but also largely giving you the control that you can you know, sort of uh, juggle between different subjects, approach it in a more, approach your higher education in a more flexible manner. That's what we're trying to do. So when I say affordable, we're trying to make a degree that costs 1.5 crores down to about 35, 40 lakhs with its academic fee. So that's how affordable we're trying to make it, we're trying to give you more scholarships. Rank comes from a university called Northern Arizona University, uh, ranked number 46 for its engineering programs in the United States, one of the best in the US to go for. Rag is our esteemed partner and uh, with Rags University, we try to bring you more STEM degree courses in the United States, uh, where as soon as you graduate out of high school, or if you've graduated from the high school, from a high school in the last three years, uh, we've made that path for you to enter into a US STEM school. Extremely easy. Rag and I are going to be talking about it throughout the course of the webinar. And my question and answer now will begin with Rag. Rag, absolutely mm -hmm. thrilled to have you. My first question to you is, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many learners here understand what STEM is. Sure. Why is STEM education important? Why the United States, if I'm looking for STEM? Uh, I'm sure we don't really want to ask uh, why should we go to the US? I think we're pretty clear. It's, it's a superpower, sure. one of the mm -hmm. best to go and study. But, 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 but just throw right. a little bit more light on STEM and the context sure. and the industries on the rise in the United States with regard to STEM. Great, great, absolutely. Thanks again, Praneet. So, you know, obviously with the US being the, the largest sort of economy in the world and certainly uh, a leading nation in terms of some of the biggest information technology companies, uh, just being one example, uh, there's definitely a surge and increase in demand in terms of job opportunities and product development and so on. And, you know, obviously as uh, the US sort of focuses on those needs, uh, not just coming here from the United States, but from all over the world, one example just being, uh, you know, the uh, the sort of surge, the demand in uh, microchips that we saw uh, recently in, in our economy. Uh, the U.S. certainly is uh, a leader uh, recently here in the United States. Uh, Intel, a major company here, uh, they announced a $20 billion investment in the state of Ohio uh, to uh, sort of build one of the largest microchip uh, companies uh, in the world. So the U.S. certainly sees a lot of these demands and needs uh, you have companies like Tesla, who are sort of uh, the pioneers in terms of, you know, electric cars and, and many other aspects. And I think because of the fact that the U.S. has this vision and sees a clear sort of, uh, you know, demand of, you know, what the future needs are going to be, there's definitely a lot of increase in terms of opportunities within the STEM fields. And when I talk about STEM, you know, certainly information technology, computer science, that is part of the STEM, uh, but it's sort of a, a much larger field. You're looking in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So, you know, right now, as we're sort of in midst of this pandemic, and we're looking at some of the, the major vaccine companies in the world, whether it's Pfizer, whether it's Moderna, Johnson Johnson, uh, 
Uh, these are your American companies. So once again, you're seeing uh, you know, a lot of demand and opportunities when you're looking at not just engineering fields, but even within fields of science, you know, uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, you know, other health-based needs and so on. And I think because of that, uh, I think certainly US remains a very attractive place uh, for a high education because there's a huge demand. I think you know, we'll take a look at some of our statistics today specific to computer science, but essentially any STEM field that you may pick up, whether if it's a statistics, whether if it's mathematics, uh, whether it's uh, computer science or a field in, um, you know, sort of health sciences, pharmaceuticals, uh, essentially uh, the, the opening job uh, opportunities in these fields uh, in terms of salaries is anywhere starting at least at the minimum 75,000 and then sort of uh, going up. So certainly the opportunity uh, is there. Uh, even right now with many of the challenges that we're facing within the pandemic, uh, the US remains uh, an economy which is growing. There's a lot of opportunities. Uh, and I think uh, that's one reason why we see a lot of international students coming from India. In fact, the, uh, the demand in STEM field is so much that recently, just this week, uh, the, the Biden administration actually went ahead and emphasized uh, many more other areas of interest uh, as STEM fields. So for example, you know, important areas such as climate science and change, environmental policy, and many other areas now have been designated by the US government as sort of STEM designated areas. And this is important for our international students because you know, as they come to the US to study uh, these STEM focused areas, not just you know, computer science and many of the engineering programs, but other areas in climate science and change, statistics, mathematics, uh, these being STEM designated areas basically allows them the opportunity to work up to three years, what we call the optional practical training uh, once they go on to graduate. And again, this being no surprise, these students tend to be far more attractive uh, to the employers here in the US industry, uh, certainly because of the, the demand and supply perspective, but also for the fact that, you know, the employers get to know these students in that three-year period as they go on to certainly sponsor them for H-1B sponsorships and so on. So we're certainly excited about the opportunity. And even with all the challenges that we've seen in the pandemic, I think the STEM fields have sort of emerged as the winner here in the U.S. and certainly a great opportunity for international students from India to come and study and be a part of those education fields also. Absolutely. I think that answers most of uh, what I had in mind when I was asking you all of this. I think just for me to summarize this for all the attendees here, um, Rag mentioned the robustness and the dynamism of US as a tech economy. Not only is it the best in the world, but most, I mean, it's the hotspot of any tech innovation, all breakthroughs. You talk about Tesla, you talk about all bioinformatics research that happened on the vaccine, uh, all of it came to the United States. So, so it's a hotspot. So I think when we're looking at our education, we want to be a part of a system of an ecosystem of a biosphere where most of the innovation is happening, most of the change is happening, most of the future is being created. So I think not only is education limited to a simple campus setting, but a lot more about the industrial environment, how thriving is the economy and how, how tech dominant. Well, for the most part, tech is going to be everywhere, but I think tech, tech starts from there. So, which is one thing. I think second, Rag mentioned that whenever you do a STEM, degree in the US, the scope of which he said is increasingly growing wider. Your starting salaries are 75,000 USD and above, which means about 60 lakh Indian rupees and above, which means with our program, whether you go on a one plus three setting, so one out of the four years you're covering in India or a two plus two setting, you're, annu you're, you're anyway going to be recovering all the cost of the four years in your first year of work. I think that kind of return on investment does not come in any country except the US because the salaries are really high. The other part is, I'm not sure how many of you are well-researched here, but the US gives you one year of OPT after your degrees are normally done. It's just one year of post-study work visa, but with a special clause for all STEM degree holders, that time gap or that time for you to train after your degree or work after your degree is stretched to three years which means for you to stay back for longer, you have to have an H-1B visa. So that three years gives you ample time for you to exhibit, exercise, 
um, show and sort of hone your skills and show your acumen uh, to your employer with which they can actually extend an H-1B sponsorship to you for, for you to build your tech career in the US. I think uh, a bachelor's followed up by three years of work, maybe, maybe a few more years of work followed by a master's will set you up for success in the United States. With that being said, Rog, sure. uh, want to know about the cost of education in the US and what is Northern Arizona University doing to make it more affordable for upgrad learners? Sure, absolutely. So I think that's a great question, uh, Praneet, because certainly I think the cost is a major factor when our students, as well as our uh, parents of our um, students, when they consider to send their children abroad, uh, in this case, the United States, and uh, particularly looking at the collaboration with Upgrad, I think what is the key here is the fact that, you know, ideally, your bachelor's degree here in the United States uh, may have taken you uh, four years uh, and, and that's sort of the path for most of our bachelor's degree here in the United States. Uh, however, with the collaboration here in Upgrad, uh, you have the choice of uh, pursuing that first year or up to two years in India itself. So Upgrad and Northern Arizona University have collaborated. And that means that you can pursue many of the courses that we will basically accept here at Northern Arizona University through Upgrad. Uh, and if you wanna go ahead and pursue that particular degree, for one year or two years in India itself. Uh, so that's sort of a big plus in terms of that program because it brings down the cost uh, of what you may end up spending uh, if you come down here to the United States and basically pursue you all your four years here in the US in terms of the cost of living, uh, you know, certainly the cost of attendance and so on. So now you have the option of pursuing up to two years in India and then basically coming to Northern Arizona University uh, finishing the last two years here, taking your core courses, uh, in this case in computer science here at Northern Arizona University, and then basically going on to get your degree from Northern Arizona University, as well as go on uh, to pursue your OPT for up to three years. So again, when you're looking at in terms of the return on investment, you're still getting a US degree, uh, you're still getting the option of pursuing a three-year OPT However, instead of now spending all four years here in the United States in terms of cost, in terms of cost of living, uh, you've basically cut down that cost essentially into half. Uh, and that's a huge, um, I, I do think, you know, savings uh, and, and certainly going on to, you know, pursue a STEM program like computer science. Um, as we shared, uh, the average salaries you're looking at are just about starting at 75,000 and going up. So essentially, uh, in terms of the return on investment, that's something that you can basically uh, get back in about a year itself. And of course, being a STEM designated uh, major student, you can go on to pursue the STEM program or the OPT in this case for up to three years. So again, certainly a lot of opportunities and that's why we're excited about this program. Uh, as someone who came from India as an international student, uh, this is an exciting opportunity and a bridge to offer to our students as well as parents in India uh, who certainly want to send their students abroad and are looking for such opportunities, but at the same time, uh, certainly may be worried a little bit in terms of the cost perspective also. Absolutely, Raj. Uh, just, just to mention to the attendees, uh, a normal U.S. school would, I mean, by a school, I mean a university. So a normal U.S. business or tech school would cost you about 20 to 25 lakhs a year in tuition fee alone, all the way from 20 thousand USD to about 35. Uh, with RAG, the, the setup that we've achieved with Northern Arizona University is that uh, while you're doing the first four semesters in India or the first two semesters in India, if you maintain a GPA of seven and above, you get entitled to a 20,000 US dollars of scholarship, 10,000 every year for the last two years, which brings your cost significantly down by eight lakhs every year so that that instead of 21 lakhs at nau per year you barely paying 13 lakhs a year so that's the scholarship that uh, nau has been extending to upgrad learners so we're trying to make sure that because we normally have the perception that us is very expensive to study i think we're trying to change that narrative we're, we're trying to achieve a par paradigm shift here trying to see how can we make one of the best education systems in the world more affordable for learners like yourself who've got the right intention, who've got the right academic credentials, who've got the right uh, know-how and the academic readiness. The other part of the program, Rag, that 
we normally look at when we talk to Indian students is um, if they don't feel that they can get a very high score at SAT, if they don't have everything ready, they missed out on timelines, or they're not just academically ready. I think in India, one of the things that I'm sure you know about is our parents normally make it difficult for us to leave right after school, I think. So this program helps them to a lot of extent um, into building their academic readiness or intellectual maturity to then shift to the campus. Coming to campus, I just want to know, how does campus life look like at NAU? Maybe you'd want to show us a few slides of how, how does the campus look? I think we'd, we'd have them imagine their lives in the US. Perfect. Absolutely. So I'd be happy to share some of our slides here from Northern Arizona University. So just to kind of give you a perspective, uh, we are a public research university here in the United States. Uh, we were established in 1899. Uh, so certainly a very prestigious public uh, research university. We're located in the city of Flagstaff in Arizona. Uh, so I'm sure you've heard about some of the major metropolitan cities, uh, you know, as we get to see in uh, some of our slides. So that's our location on the southwest part of uh, the United States, very close uh, to the state of California, which certainly is a hub in terms of information technology companies, uh, and even in terms of location. So we're sort of surrounded by some of the major metropolitan cities here in the US, uh, certainly very close to some of the uh, tourist attractions here, uh, as well as some of the other major cities, Phoenix, LA, uh, Vegas being only about three and a half, four hours away. So again, um, you know, even though we're in a college town, the fact that we are surrounded by some of these major metropolitan areas gives our students a lot of opportunities in terms of uh, jobs and so on. For example, uh, one good example is um, next week we are actually uh, organizing an international career week specific to our international students. And we're excited to have companies like Amazon, uh, Tawine's uh, Semiconductor. Uh, they have a huge manufacturing unit in the city of Phoenix. Uh, they've put a $12 billion investment, and that means now they're looking for electrical engineers, computer science majors, uh, and they are going to be here on campus talking to our students. Uh, we'll have companies like PricewaterhouseCooper. Uh, we'll have companies like Intel coming on campus. And that's a benefit when you're in this part of the country. You have these companies in the state of Arizona uh, and certainly helps them uh, come to our campus and get to meet our students. Uh, so again, just talking about uh, you know campus life, we're a major public research university, uh, over 20,000 uh, students, 22,000 students, and of course, 1,300 international students representing about 80 plus uh, countries overall, and certainly a history of more than 120 years, offering more than 150 academic programs. Uh, and that certainly is an attractive option for students when they consider sort of a comprehensive, large public research university, which not only offers your bachelor's degree, but even programs in master's, as well as PhD options as well. Uh, so that certainly is uh, an attractive uh, element for many of the students who are interested in studying uh, for uh, international uh, uh, education here in the United States. So these are just some of the rankings. You know, again, some things that I do like to highlight is the fact that we're among the top universities in terms of innovative schools, ranked by the US News and World Report in 2022. Also, the fact that we're among the top 50 institutions in terms of NASA funding opportunities and certainly among uh, the top 10 uh, worldwide institutions in terms of being involved in research and among the top 200 with the National Science Foundation. So certainly exciting opportunities there in terms of all around when it comes to ranking and certainly working with major organizations from NASA uh, to also working very close with the US government also on many of these aspects. Now, what makes uh, an NAU degree exciting is the experiential learning opportunity. Uh, and this to me is certainly a great example. For example, if you're an engineering student here at Northern Arizona University pursuing your bachelor's degree, your last year here is essentially part of your capstone, uh, you know, what we call sort of design for learning. And as part of that, uh, uh, you're basically working in a small group setting, working on a project, presenting to a real world company. It could be you know, a company like Intel, Amazon, many of these sort of IT companies come on campus. And so you get to sort of design a project, 
on a real world issue, perhaps on a challenge or a problem that this company is facing and get to present with them. And that in itself sort of leads a pathway to an internship and certainly to other job opportunities as well. So I do think that uh, sort of the experiential learning aspect, uh, you know, offers a great opportunity for our students uh, because then you can certainly add that experience to your resume. Uh, and that certainly is a big plus. Now, being a big major comprehensive university, there's number of options to live on campus, there's dining halls, there's student organizations. And when we talk about student organizations, um, you know, if I may move ahead, uh, certainly the Indian student organization here on campus is certainly something that is very close to me uh, and uh, certainly something that I greatly enjoy in terms of sort of spending time with them, whether if it's for Diwali, whether it's for Holi, or even getting to play cricket at times. So the Indian Association of Northern Arizona, of course, here uh, is uh, one of the organizations that you could be part of. Uh, but we have more than 400 student organizations, uh, including uh, the student chapter of IEEE, uh, which certainly is an exciting opportunity for many of our engineering students to be uh, a part of as well. Outside of that, of course, uh, we talked about career development. You know, for our students coming from India, uh, in general, I would say for South Asia, uh, you're looking at coming to the United States as a pathway to employability, looking at internships, looking at jobs, uh, and we certainly prepare them well. Um, we have a centralized career development office, uh, as well as we do have career development specialists uh, specific to each college. So whether if you're in the engineering college, whether you're in the business school uh, or in the hospitality management program, you have specialized uh, you know, career development colleagues available in those programs to help you find those opportunities. We have our own sort of career development web page. Uh, we call it the handshake that helps our students find job opportunities while they're on campus, whether if it's a you know opportunity to do research with a faculty member or working in a different capacity, but even in terms of organizing career fairs. So we talked about the International Career Week that's coming up this week. Uh, in about a couple of weeks, the College of Engineering is holding their own fair. In about three to four weeks, we have the College of Business organizing their own career fair. So once again, you're seeing ample opportunities where you get to mingle and get to know folks from the industry uh, and sort of, you know, start getting that industry perspective in terms of what kind of skills are they looking at when they're looking for interns as well as uh, new employees also. So again, uh, constantly keeping in touch with the industry need and connections uh, as we sort of, you know, educate our students on many of these uh, academic programs. Now, sort of coming into uh, the UpGrad program, uh, this is a very special program and we developed a collaboration with UpGrad. It certainly cuts down the cost, but what is unique is the fact that when you're taking these courses through UpGrad, through our partner here in India, uh, we are 100% counting those courses. Now, for example, let's say if you pursued some of these courses in India, at let's say a random higher education institution, there's no guarantee absolutely if any of those courses would be counted here at NAU or for that matter at any other US higher education institution. However, when we develop a partnership in this case with UpGrad, uh, we go through an articulation process. We essentially go through each of the academic courses that you see on the left-hand side here. Uh, and we make sure that these courses are counted towards your NAU courses. And that way we sort of guarantee you that if you take these courses almost up to 79 credit hours, uh, these will be counted here at Northern Arizona University 100%. Uh, and so again, you could basically get started in India, uh, perhaps take one semester, two semesters, or essentially up to two years of academic coursework in India at a cost which is much cheaper uh, not having to worry about spending on uh, the cost of living and so on, and then come to Northern Arizona University for the last two years, still get your degree from NAU, still get the STEM OPT advantage, uh, which certainly is a huge plus. So this is, of course, one of our programs, the Applied Computer Science program that you're looking at, that we have an articulation. Uh, so uh, these would be the courses that you would essentially come uh, and take care in the fall, spring, and summer semester and essentially finish your degree here at NAU in about two years uh, and so on. So once again, uh, a good pathway that we have sort of structured with our colleagues in India. And then the, of course, the other program is your traditional sort of computer science program. The major difference that you see here between these two programs is 
let's say if you're coming from you know, a field, um, you know, an arts field or a computer science field. And if you feel like your mathematics is not that strong, uh, you could perhaps pursue a bachelor's in applied computer science. However, if you're coming from a field in the science field, having taken some of those courses around in mathematics and so on, certainly you can go on to pursue the computer science field as well. So again, slight differences between the two programs, but the good news is you can clearly do up to two years if you want in India. Uh, and then come to NAU to pursue the rest of the degree. So certainly helps you cut down the overall cost uh, and so on. Uh, and then of course, uh, again, in terms of the admissions process, so you're looking at these two programs that we have collaboration with Upgrad with, uh, and we do accept new international students in the fall semester, which is in August, and then the spring semester, which is in January. And of course, uh, in terms of the SAT, there is no SAT requirement for us. In fact, that's something that you will find with most US universities. They are waiving off uh, such sort of admission requirements in terms of the SAT particularly. Uh, we do require the English language requirements. Uh, and so for that proficiency, we would accept TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo, uh, Pearson, any of those English language proficiency tests. Uh, and then of course, uh, we would be happy to transfer your courses as you get started with Upgrad in India. And of course, if you complete up to 24 credit hours in India with Upgrad, uh, we would not even require your high school transcripts uh, in terms of the admission process. Uh, we also have a really good scholarship opportunity for students that are coming through Upgrad. Uh, the opportunity here is that, you know, if you are able to maintain a GPA of up to 3.0, uh, in that 4.0 scale in the US American GPA point of view, uh, you are able to get a scholarship of $10,000 uh, in uh, basically every year. So during the two year period that you will be here at NAU or three year, if you would uh, like to come here for three years and finish that one year in India, we would be able to offer you the support of a $10,000 scholarship every year for the year that you're here at Northern Arizona University, whether it's two years, whether it's three years, depending on how and when you would like to get started. So certainly a uh, good uh, you know, uh, scholarship opportunity there as well. And uh, once again, you know, we're talking about jobs here and I know that's important for students, for our parents. And, and these figures right here in front of you are certainly a great example. So these figures are from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics and these are your medium average salary. So we're not even talking about the highest on the scale. We're talking about your medium average salaries for students who are coming out and graduating from many of these different areas and going on to become computer programmers, computer system analysts, uh, your database architects, uh, web developers, uh, digital designers. Uh, and these are from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, their occupational handbook. Essentially, you can go in and take a look at any particular field that you're interested in. These are all resources available to pretty much everyone, including if you wanna take a look at them from India. But I think this is sort of interesting as we are talking about STEM fields. Um, if you compare the STEM designated fields to let's say, you know, a non-STEM designated field, perhaps um, something in communications or a different area, there's a huge difference in salary that you're looking at just those beginning salaries, sometimes even a massive difference of about 30, 40,000 uh, average salaries and so on. And I think this is, uh, this is extremely exciting because this presents an opportunity. And the fact that uh, for on an average, students could get these salaries starting with their bachelor's degree uh, is uh, an opportunity, but also a return on investment. What you may put in your education, you can basically get back in about essentially an year's time, uh, particularly with this degree with NAU because of the collaboration and sort of the cutting cost aspect also. So again, uh, some really exciting perspective there. Uh, and I will give the bite back to Praneet and happy to take other questions as we go from here. Absolutely, I think that does uh, sort of give us a lot of insights into not only the academic pedagogy at NAU and the campus life, uh, in, and you know the entire journey of a student, but also where is he or she and ultimately going to end up. So I think the career progression bit is extremely important. Um, also want to give a little bit clarity on the credits. So a normal US degree requires you to finish 120 credits 
to earn a proper four-year bachelor degree. And so you can finish up to 60 credits in India yeah. mm-hmm. or 30, depends on. So, from, so you can't do 45, either 30 in one year or 60 in two years, and then you transition to the NAU campus. While Upgrad assists you in everything, um, the, you can be rest assured that the curriculum is duly articulated to the Northern Arizona University curriculum, and it's not something that we invented here in India. It is in a full adherence and synchronicity with what you must be, what you would have anywhere learned at the campus. Anything, I think, one of the things that I always stick to when I keep mentioning, reiterating, reaffirming is a computer science degree is mostly a laptop degree anyway. So I think the first two years are mostly foundational years where you're learning the basic know-how. And you can anyway save a lot of that cost about 20 to 25 lakhs of your academic costs, another 10 to 15 lakhs of your living costs. You're saving about 35, 40 lakhs every year that you're staying in India by studying online but 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 yes i mean nonetheless those two years of campus studies with specialization are extremely important whether you're going for computer science or applied computer science rag has all, already largely told you the difference although i think there is negligible right i mean the difference is negligible yes sir yes yeah absolutely right so 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 you you mentioned the applied computer science should be taken by those who so yeah, I would recommend if you are not someone who is a big, you know, let's say uh, a fan of uh, courses like calculus, uh, if mathematics is not your best friend, uh, but at the same time you have interest in a field like computer science and certainly would like to go ahead and build a career in computer science, uh, you certainly could take these uh, the, the applied computer science program. And so once again, what you're looking at, there's definitely a number of courses that you would be taking uh, in the computer science area from operating systems to intermediate programming uh, to again, database systems and so on. However, uh, you know, uh, some of the harder, the more challenging uh, computer science courses that you may take with a computer science degree uh, and that particularly being again, uh, you start getting into uh, the algorithms aspect. Uh, that's just one example, but also getting into uh, the computing tools class as well as Um, some of the harder, more challenging classes. So that's the difference that you're seeing between the two programs. So I would say, if you're someone who's probably coming from a field in uh, arts in India, if you're graduating with an arts degree, uh, with an arts major humanities, or I would say even commerce, uh, the applied computer science program is probably a good fit. Uh, I would say if you're coming from the mathematics, the science side, uh, or uh, if you are still coming from the commerce side, but you feel confident about your mathematics skills, uh, I would certainly suggest the uh, the traditional computer science program. So again, the good news is both of these programs are your STEM designated fields. And nice. so it doesn't matter which program that you graduate from, you have the opportunity to pursue uh, the three-year OPT, but slight differences in terms of the uh, academic uh, core courses that we offer in these two programs. Right, Rav, I think that does answer the question. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to ask you, uh, well, I think prior to me doing that, I'll just take up some of the questions there. For those of you who are largely interested in master degree, uh, yes, we have a one plus one setup. So not really a one plus one, but more or less like an eight month thing here in India, followed by a 15 to 16 months of curriculum. In the US, we've got two universities, Clark and Yeshiva University. Um, While Clark is in Massachusetts, um, Yeshiva is in the state of New York. Uh, I I mean, for for this context right now, we're talking about the undergraduate degree. So I'll just leave my email address. You can definitely write to me for any master's related doubt. Yes, we, we follow the same setup. One, I mean, you cover a lot of the credits so out of the 30 credits in a master's degree you cover up to six in india with us not only do you save up the cost per credit you save up the living cost but you also save up a lot uh, by easing yourself into the el- eligibility criteria which is anyway very strenuous and very rigorous very stringent that way uh, very grilling um, also i think our undergraduate degree with northern arizona university or a postgraduate degree with the other university partners i think the major value proposition is that we let the child ease himself or herself into the academic rigor where they know more about what to expect how grueling can academia be in the united states Um, the curriculum 
um, and how is everything structured? What am I going to learn? And to to develop that maturity in kids in that one year, for parents to plan their finances in one year, for everything to fall in place when you are ready that, hey, you know what, my child or I, uh, I mean, we're ready now. And you know, now is a good time. So we've saved enough money. We've got all the finances ready. Um, and my child now feels intellectually mature enough you know, to, to handle the sort of rigor that um, universities in the US have. Uh, so for masters, write to me on my email address. Students from other universities in India doing masters, are they eligible in upgrad courses? Yes, so you can only look at masters for now. Good, good evening, I'm a bio student. It's my last year for bachelor's degree. Yes, you can apply for masters. I've given you my email address. Uh, then Rag, what other things should be on our profile other than CGPA or GRE or TOEFL score? Well, with upgrads pro programs, whether they're for masters or UG, uh, you don't actually have to have a profile. Any extracurricular activity relevant in the field is highly appreciated, it's highly welcome, but you can skip a setting like Rag mentioned. You have another one year of English proficiency testing and you've got complete waiver on any profile building record because all of these are eligible, all these are admission uh, gateways. You know, they, they help you expedite or accelerate your admission cycle. But because you've been enrolled in the first year in India, you're anyway through that, right? Um, what about so about masters? So we've got in the US data science, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, data analytics, uh, information technology, and project management. Just so you guys know, I mean, we've got a lot of them asking about masters. I'm sorry, dog. Um, what what is the guarantee, Rag, that after two years this pro program won't turn into dirt and is actually relevant? So probably I think to rephrase what the child wants to know is if uh, if if after two years of having finished sixty course credits, where 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 am I uh, placed then? As in, what do I do next? Absolutely. So again, you know, we have this sort of uh, you know collaboration with Upgrad. We respect that. We have this partnership. And this basically means that, you know, we certainly would love to welcome, you know, more students coming through this bridge opportunity. So again, we're going to honor each and every course uh, that you th take through our institution in India with Upgrad, because we have an articulation with them. Our faculty members have taken a look at all the courses that Upgrad has to offer, gone course by course, and basically have given them the designation as the same level of courses that you take here at Northern Arizona University. So that's a huge plus. And that's why we have this uh, you know, collaboration with Upgrad. And just to sort of say that uh, we're not the only US university and Upgrad is now collaborating with a number of other prestigious US universities. And because of the fact that we know how serious Upgrad is, uh, you know, how great their operations are in terms of outreach, uh, U.S. universities definitely value this partnership. And again, we understand the cost perspective. You know, surely some students may want to come here and pursue all four years of their undergraduate education in the United States. But for sometimes, uh, cost is a matter of decision making when they would like to pursue their higher education in the U.S. And in this case, to pursue a bridge program like with Upgrad is certainly a great plus. Uh, so again, every course that you get to take with Upgrad because we have an articulation agreement them, because we have a, a memorandum of understanding with them, we will accept each course here at Northern Arizona University. We're a public research university. And what also it means is that once you finish the remaining two years at NAU, uh, you get your NAU degree, which is the same as basically coming here from the first year and then pursuing that. So now you're basically able to save two years of cost uh, and at the same time, pursue a STEM designated program. So once again, uh, you have a great opportunity to get the same level of education, uh, but get started in India, save a little bit of money, but have the same resources and opportunities available to you when you come to Northern Arizona University, just like any of our other students who start here from the first year. Thanks, Rag. So just, so we've got one more question, would I be considered a transfer student or a regular student after two years? So you basically would come in as a transfer student, but now keep this in mind, and this is very, very important. Because we have an articulation agreement with Upgrad, you're not just any other transfer student, let's say, who 
went to uh, higher education in India, uh, you know, and picked up some courses and now would like to transfer to NEU. Because I can very openly say that uh, in that case, uh, your chances of transferring courses would have been extremely, extremely challenging. In this particular case, you know, because we have the articulation agreement, our faculty members in the computer science program have gone through each of the courses that Upgrad has to offer and basically have said that if a student comes from Upgrad in India, we will give them NAU college credit for that particular course. And this is what makes, you know, sort of the articulation aspect of things so much easier for a student that is coming through this program uh, and getting the same benefits. You know, the fact that you're getting the same scholarship as any of our regular student who may have come in from the first year, uh, you're getting the same opportunities in terms of the STEM OPT and so on. So once again, the same level of opportunities, but, you know, saves you a little bit of cost. And at the same time, you can spend a little bit more time in India, taking up some of those courses, uh, getting yourself acquainted with the basics in computer science, and then coming to NAU after that. Absolutely. So what Rang mentioned is while you are getting a literal entry, you're a regular student at the end of the four years, just like any other normal NAU student, because everything that you've studied has gone through a proper auditing, waiting process. Um, We've ensured that we include all the necessary components to stay at par with the rigor, the intensity, uh, the robustness, and the dynamism of the NAU curriculum. So whenever you step on campus, you're at, you're at par with any other learner there. And you graduate as a regular student. So no, I mean, your degree is a regular degree, which is why Rag mentioned that your final OPT, your optional practical training, which is your post-study work visa, is exactly similar to a normal, regular NAU student. Rag, the next question is, um, if I did my 12th in a commerce background, can I make a STEM career in the US? Well, yes, here's the catch. Here's what Upgrad does. Upgrad's first year is actually a BCA year. BCA does not require you to take physics, chemistry, mathematics. That way you can easily transition from a commerce background to a BCA. The BCA in first year then transitions you into a BSc a BS degree, a Bachelor of Science degree in the United States. So we've, we've laid out a very easy path for you to jumpstart your career you know, uh, in STEM, whether you're a humanities student or a commerce student, which is what I meant when I said in the beginning that we've democratized education. Upgrad is trying to make sure that switching between fields is an option, which is anyway the future of education. You know, uh, you're stacking up micro credit courses, earning 120, and then you're calling yourself a degree holder. Uh, well, and while Rag has always been very promising about STEM career being the future of the world, and if you study a STEM degree in the US, you're getting the best of both the worlds. One, you're studying in the US, the technological hotspot, but second, you're future-proofing your career with a STEM degree which is going to be embedded deeply, infused into every industry, healthcare, fin finance, education, I mean, you name it and it has it. Uh, Rag, the next question for you is, uh, what is the minimum average salary package? So Rag mentioned 75,000 US dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, Rag, in terms of STEM institutions in the United States. Sure. Uh, how how is Northern Arizona University placed? Uh, you have taken us through a couple of your rankings, but I think the student may basically read out that does this differ from a university to university, the amount of salary that we get? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a really good question. And honestly, to be very frank, I always tell it often depends on the student and the opportunities they sort of take on. So, for example, you know, uh, let's say you could be, uh, you know, someone who goes into, let's say, uh, a top 50, a top 20 institution. Uh, but all if you're doing is essentially just taking classes and getting good grades. Uh, you know, it may not be that beneficial in terms of finding those opportunities in terms of internships or jobs thereafter. You know, I think what we realize here at NAU is the fact that, you know, education and good grades are important, uh, but particularly for international students, you know, who sometimes may lack work experience, getting those projects, you know, getting your profile going on GitHub, uh, getting your profile established in terms of finding that internship, uh, you know, getting some kind of work experience, whether you're working on some kind of a group project, uh, you know, or perhaps a different company here in the U.S., those are important factors when you're looking at internship and job opportunities. So I think 
that's something that we clearly focus on. And I think the other thing that I do want to highlight in terms of quality, you know, how do you sort of base quality? You know, for example, you know, having come from India, you know, back in the day, everything that when we looked at quality, we used to take a look at ISI, is this product ISI marked? So you're essentially looked at, you know, accreditation here in the United States. Uh, and for an engineering degree, the, the golden accreditation is an ABET degree. You know, so ABET is the major accrediting body when it comes to engineering programs in the United States. And so the fact that we are ABET accredited, our engineering degrees in computer science are ABET accredited, certainly brings in the quality perspective. Uh, because again, to get that accreditation, we have to go through uh, a minimal uh, sort of academic quality, be able to provide the same level of resources that students may have at other institutions in the United States. So I do think that at the end of the day, Perhaps it may differ a little bit, but I do think it's really upon the student, you know, what kind of resources and opportunities you take upon yourself, what kind of connections that you're building uh, that will lead you to a job in one of these big uh, tech firms from a computer science program as compared to coming from the level of institution. Because honestly, uh, you may have a 4.0 GPA and the other student may have a 3.5 GPA, so slightly lower. But the fact that if you may have a couple of internships under your belt, honestly, for the industry, that's probably going to be far more valuable than the slight GPA difference that you're also seeing in your academic program. So I think there are a number of factors when industry specialists look at this. Honestly, at the end of the day, they will basically ask you to, okay, uh, you're interested in working for a company like Amazon or Intel. Here's a little project. Take about a week go ahead and develop this project, work for that for me, come back, do a mini presentation, uh, and that's going to be part of your job interview, essentially. So really your skills are being tested. They don't really care uh, you know, if you got this degree from Arizona or a different state or a different public university, it's really putting your skills at test. Uh, and, and that's where I do think that in the US, it's not so much you know, where you graduated from. Here's a project, let's see what you will do on that. And on that basis, we'll go ahead and hire you. Absolutely, I think skills uh, outdo any label of education sometimes. I think it's, it's your ability to turn things around that get you uh, through with a good job. And I think more recently, I think more employers have shifted to a more experiential hands-on way of testing uh, you know, if you're a good fit for the job or not. But, but I think just to assure the learners, I think when any ABAED uh, accredited degree is being run in a university, you can automatically think of it as one of the best and globally acclaimed um, as a you know, valid STEM degree. So anywhere you go, whether you come back to India or you go to Europe or you go to Canada, uh, you've probably future-proofed uh, your STEM career already as soon as you did graduate out of NAU with an ABD accredited STEM degree. With that being said, Raj, let me take up a few more questions with you. Uh, can we transfer to university in US after completing one or two years in a college in India? Yes, so Chandigarh University is our partner. Uh, while they are articulate, I mean, their curriculum is articulated to Northern Arizona University, they deliver it for them here in India as a partner. Uh, so yes, which is what we're trying to make sure that, you know, how, how which is how we're trying to make it easier for you to transition. Uh, for regular private college, colleges, we are not really the right uh, uh, organization or authority to be making a comment on that. I'm sure Raag will also refrain on the same. Uh, I think Raag, we're mostly done with the questions. I think I've taken up all the questions. Uh, just wanted to ask you, Raj, uh, what happens after these students graduate, they finish the three years of OPT, what happens next if it gets the H1B sponsorship does not happen? Sure. So again, I think, uh, you know, just to sort of uh, clarify in terms of the H1B sponsorship, it's certainly competitive. Uh, but however, if you take a look at those numbers very carefully, almost 75% of the H-1B visas that are given in the United States are actually given to, uh, you know, Indian citizens, many of them who, of course, come to the United States to uh, pursue their higher education in the U.S. So this, that's certainly a big factor that, you know, Indians certainly benefit greatly from the H-1B visa program. And 
Uh, a great example of that is the fact that many of the major IT companies now, when you look at Google, Microsoft, Adobe, um, Twitter, and many others, uh, the executives and the CEOs of those companies are folks who came to the US once as an international student and were a beneficiary of the H-1B program. But let's say in, in a scenario, let's say even if you don't get an H-1B sponsorship, uh, there's a couple of opportunities here. For example, you know, obviously you're getting the three years of OPT and in terms of uh, what your earning salary are going to be, essentially in about one year, uh, you're getting that return on investment, what you invested in your uh, higher education in the United States. So the second and the third year is essentially a plus uh, from that perspective. But on the same side, I think what you do is, let's say if you've worked for a company like Amazon, Intel, or many of these multinational companies, you know, these same companies now have offices even across India. You know, again, Microsoft recently made the major announcement of sort of uh, increasing their investment in the city of Hyderabad. Uh, that's just one example. And I think that's only going to grow because these companies see the talent uh, in India and see India as a natural sort of democratic partner uh, with the institutions that we have in place. So I, I do think that these opportunities still exist. Let's say if you decide to go back to India, uh, because there are a number of multinational companies, many of them American, but some even from outside of the United States, that would love to hire someone who is uh, educated and trained in the U.S. higher education system. Uh, and I, I do think that will always be a big plus, because honestly, there are students who, due to family and other reasons, uh, opt to go back after some time. Uh, but certainly the education, the practical learning that you have here uh, will always give you a one-step advantage to going back home and working for a multinational company uh, that now may have an office in Bangalore, Hyderabad, Mumbai, and so on. Absolutely. I think, and also to add on to that, while they're in India, if they ever come back to India, we offer them complete placement support from our end. We have got a portal called Job, uh, uh, called Upgrade Recruit, uh, where, where we're trying to extend all our career-related services to these learners. And I think of course, when they're there, they're anyway getting heavy support from you in terms of job fairs, networking events. Uh, you mentioned the capstone and the internship that they're doing, uh, which eventually would become, uh, may become their potential future employer as well. Uh, what more career support services do, does Northern Arizona University extend towards the learners, Rog? Absolutely. So again, you know, when you arrive here on campus for our students, you know, international students, you know, one of the first things that they're looking at is finding that sort of part-time job opportunity on campus. Uh, so certainly, you know, we have our career development department. Uh, every semester, we do a part-time job fair. In fact, uh, today for the spring semester, we have our part-time job fair lined up here at NEU. And we do this every semester, which is hugely beneficial for our incoming international students to get to meet those employers on campus, find those part-time job opportunities to support themselves while they're pursuing their education. But even for the long term, as you start looking at internships and jobs, you know, we realize that for our international students, picking a degree often is looking very closely as that return on investment. Is this sort of value-focused education uh, for the, the life savings that my family or I am sort of putting in. And so basing on that, you know, we're sort of developing these industry connections. Uh, we're organizing career weeks, you know, uh, opportunities. Just this coming week, we have the International Career Week where we're bringing in many of NAU alumni who are now working at Intel, uh, who are working at, uh, you know, companies like Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Unit. So once again, you know, bringing those folks from the industry, they're folks from HR, talent recruiters, uh, and getting them to meet our students, getting them to meet our faculty, uh, because we realize that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, a great education is only valued Till the kind of job opportunities and internship that our students are finding. So I think that's something is extremely valuable to us. Uh, and, and we're working very hard every day uh, to build that industry connection during uh, the period of education that you'll be spending here at NAU. Well, I think which is a brilliant thing to do uh, and a brilliant vision on the, on the, the university. I think one of the biggest value proposition of studying in the U.S. is the um, the spectrum of employer base and, and the industrial giants that it has from Tesla to Intel 
uh, to Facebook, to LinkedIn. I mean, you name it. Uh, they are either based in the US or they have a major winch. I mean, they have a major part of of of, of their base in the US. I think um, just just studying in that ecosystem and trying to fight for or apply for opportunities and that kind of a hot spot. I think that alone does um, enough good for any learner who trusts the US education system and takes that call. Uh, I mean, love that part about the, about the US. I think the, the, the scope of growth that it gives you know, to an Indian student who's, who's, who's willing to build a tech career in the US. Arag, we've pretty much covered everything it has been an absolute pleasure to host you. My only final ask of you, which I normally do with every speaker who I host, is a lot of Indian community in terms of students, in terms of parents, in terms of counselors. I've met, I've even in fact met counselors who, who I mean, their only job is to counsel somebody to study abroad, but they would, they would be anxious to send their own child for a UG degree. So. How do you actually weigh the proposition of going for an undergraduate degree or looking at, you know, the fact that we'll do bachelors in India and then for masters, maybe I would end up in the US. How do you weigh the two from your own academic standpoint and from the standpoint of a student who's going to eventually compete in the job market. Mm -hmm. So how do you weigh the two? How do the two fare against each other, Rock? Absolutely. So I think here in the United States, what you're seeing is that, you know, for example, you know, having spent a lot of time in India and having family and friends in India, uh, you know, often a master's degree is often the basic job requirement uh, in terms of finding that entry level job. That's not the case in the U.S., particularly when it comes to the STEM designated programs. Partly there's a demand and supply uh, shortage, and that's why, you know, U.S. companies uh, U.S. government would love to have more STEM designated students. Now, certainly, uh, let's say if you get a master's of computer science, eventually uh, in the United States, you, you know, you're getting the opportunity of higher salary will be more. However, what is, I think, more important in the United States is not just your bachelor's or master's degree, but the kind of experiential learning opportunity that you pursue when you come to the United States. So, for example, again, uh, someone who may come in for the master's degree as compared to the bachelor's degree. Uh, honestly, there may not be a very huge difference at the beginning in terms of the salary that they may be getting unless they've already had three or four years of experience in India, perhaps working at a multinational company. Uh, so again, in many ways, uh, you're essentially at par with someone who is coming in and pursuing a master's degree in the United States, but has no work experience. Uh, because at the end of the day, as I said, a lot of times when these sort of interviews take place, uh, it's, you know, certainly the basic education is a requirement, uh, but beyond that, it's your skills. So even if you're someone who's at the bachelor's degree level, but has some, ex you know, great exponential skills, uh, is able to prove yourself to your employer that you're a good fit for them. Uh, honestly, it doesn't matter if you're a master's or bachelor's degree holding student, uh, you definitely have more opportunities. And I do think that if you come to the United States and pursue your bachelor's degree here, you have the opportunity of getting work experience. So three years of OPT, right? Now at that point of time, let's say for some reason, you're not able to get your H1B, but you decide to pursue your master's degree, uh, let's say in computer science or any other STEM designate you have the opportunity to pursue another three years of OPT on that STEM degree because now you're looking at a master's degree. So essentially between a bachelor's and master's degree, even for some reason, let's say if you don't get a H1B sponsorship, you can go on to do the first three years of you know, STEM designated OPT at the end of the bachelor's degree, then go on to do a master's degree in computer science or a different STEM uh, designate field and go on to pursue another three years of OPT through that STEM designated master's level program. So again, there are different opportunities depending on how you're looking at it. Um, and, and certainly that sort of is uh, beneficial in terms of uh, your long-term planning in terms of your career, as well as education going in. Very interesting. So what you're saying is, instead of me spending three years of my time in India, just to sort of develop that academic readiness and then end up 
in the US, even if I don't waste those three years in India, I uh, sort of immediately transition to a US bachelor degree. I'm still going to end up at the same position as I would if I was a master's grad in the US also. So I can largely accelerate my 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 growth curves in terms my growth curve in terms of my career um, even without a master's degree as long as I have a basic education degree in the US and of course of course the the four years that you're spending in the US education system I think uh, from what I believe I think that gives you a good standing in terms of the know-how of the US economy uh, you become a part of that system. I think, and uh, I've heard a lot of my university reps mentioning that your your employers look at you as one of them, right? And and so the more time you spend, uh, and like you mentioned, if you've done a bachelor's degree in the US, you have that additional leeway mm-hmm. doing another degree and staying there for at least ten years to build your foundational uh, career um, and that education standing. So. Very interesting, I think, uh, with the U.S. being uh, in the center of all technological innovation and universities like yours coming up to sort of give new age uh, education, I think any learner would be in safe hands, especially with the affordability that we're bringing, Rug. It was an absolute pleasure to host you, Rug. Uh, I hope we answered everybody's question. Just to repeat uh, somebody was asking me, how do, what do I do next? I have put down a link to apply. Here it is. So apply to uh, the Northern Arizona University Bachelor Program now. I am also going to give you my email address. You can always reach out to me on my email address for any masters or bachelors uh, related doubt. Um, I head the undergraduate admissions for Upgrad Abroad, would love to help you. And if it's an MBA related or a master's related query, I would definitely connect you to the right resource on my team. Rag, absolute pleasure. Thank you for your time. And, uh, and like I always say, uh, you know, we'll, we'll make, make sure that we see you soon, super soon. Absolutely. Thank you again, Praneet. And thank you again to all our learners who took their valuable time to come here to participate in this valued discussion. And certainly we're happy to assist them in the next step. So look forward to seeing all of you very soon in the United States, hopefully. Thanks, Rag. Thanks, everybody. Have a great evening ahead. Thank you.